Oh, good morning. Yeah, this piece behind me is a Korea War era helicopter. They used them here at Camp Mabry for training. In fact, they used them all the way up into the 1980s. They used to do all the chopper training for the Army in Texas, actually. This museum is a very big place. It's called the Texas Military Forces Museum. It has more than 10,000 artifacts, thousands of books, tens of thousands of photos, dozens of vehicles, and on top of that, people bring new items every week. They say having the museum is a way to honor those who gave their lives for the country, to encourage young people to enlist, and to learn more from the past. Here's an extended sound bite from museum director Jeff Hurt. The old axiom is those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And the reality is that war is a horrible thing. It's tragic, it's wasteful, uh, it's, uh, you know, in an ideal universe, an awkward and, and bad way for human beings to resolve their differences. But you also have to recognize that war is part of the human story. Uh, and that it is not true that any peace is better than any war. Uh, war created an independent United States. War destroyed the institution of slavery. War is what shut down Nazi concentration camps in World War II. Hmm. Now, they're working on making a lot of changes around here in addition to some major changes they've already made recently. They want to make this a major destination for museum goers and historians. They get about 16,000 visitors a year here. It's free to get in. You just need to use uh, to show your ID when you come in through the Camp Mabry gates. Joe? And you're really going to like this. You know, tanks got very loud in battle. So during World War II, they developed this system. We have a microphone here and a whole radio equipment so that they could communicate between uh, when there were tanks in the area. And here's a Sherman right here. Take a look at the treads. You see how it's all chewed up and it's only about like that thick, right? This is what a new tread looks like. It's about double the width of that other one. So they do get quite used. Now here at the museum they have tens of thousands of items. Here's a mini tour. You could drive by every day and not even know it's here. Camp Mabry, deep in the heart of Austin, is the oldest permanent military post for the Texas National Guard, established in 1892. On post there's the Texas Military Forces Museum with tanks from different eras and other heavy vehicles, including this bulldozer. But the story begins inside. These cannons are reproductions of those used in 1836 when Sam Houston used them to defeat Mexico and gain Texas's independence. Across the way, something very rare, old flags from the Civil War that were actually used. And in the center of it all, Texas. A newly renovated part of the museum is dedicated to Camp Mabry's 36th Infantry Division with a focus on World Wars I and II, including a display on the Choctaw Indian code talkers who helped pass secret messages. This is a diorama from when the 36th was actually the first U.S. division to land in Europe during World War II. This is in Italy in 1943. And up here is some actual documentary footage from combat from that time period. They liberated a concentration camp in Germany, but they were victims as well. This is a photo of U.S. soldiers who were held captive in Japan, completely emaciated. Here's another photo. And while they were in that state, they were still forced to build this railroad in Siam. There are dozens and dozens of vehicles here that go on the land and up in the air. And by the way, Camp Mabry is still headquarters for all of Texas's military forces. People who run the museum say there's something here for everyone, that war is part of our current time and part of our past, and that without studying the history, we can't learn for the future. All right, the museum here is free. It's open to the public. When you come to Camp Mabry, you just need to show your ID to get in. It's really worthwhile to come check out. Uh, and if you want to donate or you want to help, they are trying to raise money to do a complete overhaul here and make this uh, a more modern facility. Now, Joe, coming up in our next segment, we're going to look at some of the newer items they have from the wars on terror in Iraq and in, Af and in Afghanistan. So, good morning. You know, earlier this morning we were talking about some of the older items they have and artifacts uh, at the Texas Armed Forces Museum, uh, at the Texas Military Forces Museum, excuse me. Now we're talking about some things that are a little bit more modern. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Sherrick here, Lisa from the museum. Can you take us on a little tour here and explain what these things are? 
What we have here are some things from our GWAT exhibit that are coming up, Global War on Terror. These two items that you see here, they're going to help us tell the story of Sergeant Thomas Gomez. He was with the 1836 Transportation Company, a Texas National Guard unit that's on convoy duty in Iraq in 2004. His Humvee was hit by a IED explosion. You can see this is his actual Humvee window, and there is still shrapnel embedded in the window. And if people look, this is really, really it's very thick and thick heavy. and heavy. Yeah. yeah, it is not a thin piece of glass, and mm -hmm. but the explosion was so powerful that it ripped through the window and it bounced around inside and. So this is one piece of shrapnel, and then down there we see some specks. That's on the other side of the glass, right? Where, where the shrapnel bounced back on the other side, correct. There, there was just a, a massive explosion. Wow. And, so, and Sergeant uh, Gomez was killed and another man was injured. He was the first Texas National Guard member to be killed since World War II, also the first 36th Division soldier to be killed since World War II in combat. Uh, his helmet is also here. His helmet also sustained some battle damage. There's a crack in the back uh, that was not there originally. Um, he was um, from Westlaco, Texas, and we're going to you know, tell his story as part of the story of the other 11 members of the Texas National Guard who have lost their life in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. So mm -hmm. it will be a, an important part of the exhibit. And that exhibit's coming up in a couple of months, right? In a couple of months. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're trying to, to get it in place and... Um, you know, we, we definitely want to tell this story. The flag. And the, the flag here and this uh, picture of Saddam. We're going to get into that. We'll be back with Lisa just a little bit uh, later on in the show. And we'll get into these other items, explain uh, how they came to be uh, in the museum here. We're also going to look around the museum a little bit more a little later on in the show.